This week on the Retro Monster Truck Review, we talk about Louisville 1992, part number two, day number two, as we talk about uh, the day after that really surprising bracket from day one. And hey, guess what? The surprises are going to continue. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to follow us on Spotify and keep giving us five-star reviews over there on Apple iTunes. It really helps us out. I want to send out some thoughts and prayers, too, before we start to David Tucker, his girlfriend Emily, and their friend Knight. If you don't know, David drives the Team Axe monster truck. They were involved in a traffic accident last week, and a GoFundMe has been started for that team. We're going to include that GoFundMe link at the bottom of our YouTube description, as well as in our Spotify and iTunes descriptions as well. So I encourage everybody to go out there and donate and help out a very worthy team and some good people. outdoors is a four second spur and here are a 30 second run so every run's about a five would be equivalent to five runs on a you know normal race it rained a few minutes ago when the track's not completely dried is that like you know the oil is coming up out of the asphalt a little bit it's getting pretty slippery out there slippery isn't the word for it as today the monster trucks are on a long figure eight course in Louisville, Kentucky at the Louisville Motor Speedway as the United States Hot Rod Association Monster Truck Challenge done to ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Welcome one and all to another edition of the Retro Monster Truck Review. This week's show number two from Louisville Motor Speedway 1992. As Ken Brew calls it, the fastest 30 minutes in television, the Monster Truck Challenge. And Matt, I got to tell you, this particular show, this one jumps out at me as another one where you just don't even see what happens coming. It's a rapid fire uh, plethora of action for sure <laughs> the fastest 30 <laughs> minutes on television as ken says and we're in for a treat here the second day here in louisville as ken calls it from the great commonwealth of kentucky and we didn't get to cover some of this in last week's episode about the track itself so i'm just going to dive in real quick about louisville motor speedway this track you know was a premier short track in the country back then it was built in 1988 and uh, they ran a lot of regional national short track series there. Uh, the track was expanded in late 1993. They added kind of an outer loop to it, which made – they took it from the 3 eighths mile oval up to a 7 sixteenths mile. And uh, truck series raced there, the NASCAR trucks, a couple times. And White flag is out. It's Jay Sauter's race. The battle really is for second. Look out. There goes some contact. Cliff gets turned around. Will this bring out the yellow? No, checkered flag is going to fly. So it'll be Jay Sauter with the victory. Second place is going to be Mike Wallace. Third to Jimmy Hensley. Fourth to Kevin Harvick. You know, that track got on TV a lot and uh, closed in September 2001, just a couple days after 9-11. Uh, was demolished to make way for an industrial park, which is truly unfortunate because the monster truck racing and the circle track racing and the asphalt figure eight racing at Louisville are all legendary. And, you know, Scott Douglas had a big part in that speedway from the time it was built till the time it was torn down. He was, you know, involved from the promotion side. He was the general manager at one point. Uh, he helped kind of bring the, the monster trucks to Louisville for that first time in 1988. And if you listen to Scott's podcast, man, he's always talking about Andy Vertries and the, the top notch show that they ran there at Louisville all the time back in those days. And they had a local TV show covering the races and everything. It was a big operation. Yeah, Louisville Motor Speedway, without a doubt, leaves a lasting impression on any motorsports fans' minds, especially us monster truck guys. There were some of the best monster truck races ever that came out of Louisville on that figure eight track. Uh, we go into the intro for the show here, and we're introed with Rambo and Master Disaster rounding the turn heading to the cars. Uh, the drivers say how it's different than normal racing. Scott says it's like five races in one. Of course, we're talking to Scott, Scott Stevens here. Uh, Gary says the track is still wet. I don't see much water on the track, though, uh, just by well, looking at it. 
we've got water in the infield, and I think it must have rained overnight. Uh, you know, we're talking June here in in Kentucky. It's uh, June seventh, the day of this race. So you know, a lot of summer storms rolling through, and uh, there is a lot of water on the infield. So anytime somebody dips a tire into that grass, it's going to pull some moisture out onto the track. And Gary says it's almost like the oil's coming up out of the asphalt, making it really slippery. Yeah, if you look into turn number one here, you can actually see where these trucks have, have been laying down rubber from the starting line and into that corner. You can see that that particular portion of the track is a little darker than the others uh, when the trucks take off and head into that corner. Yeah, and you know we kind of move into Joe Lowe now kind of introducing the track saying we're on a figure eight course and it's and it's slick and we see a, some clips of a lot of trucks spinning out uh, and and it's going to be you know covering these throughout round number one and onward uh, as we get into the actual races but boy it's shaping up to be another day of calamity here in Louisville. Yep calamity corner we'll call it. <laughs> round one highlights here Excalibur and Tropical Thunder Excalibur jumps out to the early lead, and then Chucky just kind of loses it, almost crashes into Tropical Thunder uh, as the track claims its first victim of the day. Chucky just says he goofed right there. Man, that was a heck of a goof. Oh, look out, Chuck! He spins all the way around in the slippery track, claims its first victim of the day. Yeah, just kind of carried a little bit too much speed. Um, we're seeing first round highlights here, not the entire races, but just kind of the high points of each run. And uh, like we said, you know, it's hot now. It's not nighttime. We're in the afternoon here on Sunday and the track slick, uh, the sun beating down on it. And Chucky, you could see as he kind of passes the pit entrance, the rear end starts coming around and he tries to correct it, kind of overcorrects. It's a miracle that uh, Wayne kind of took a hard right there to the infield and, and kind of avoided contact. Yeah, very, very fortunate these two trucks didn't get together right there because Chucky did have a high volume of speed. Tropical Thunder wasn't necessarily moving as fast as Excalibur was right there, but it still could have been a heck of an impact. It could have ended up spinning Tropical Thunder around as well. Yeah, and, you know, Jim Clark asked Chucky what happened. Like you said, uh, Chucky says, I, I thought I could whip around that hard, but I goofed. And Joe says, well, he's not the only one that goofed as we move forward through these first round highlights. Rambo and Kodiak right here. We pick up the first race. We pick it up uh, the race over the first set of cars here. Rambo does a big endo stand. And man, I got to tell you, that's about as far over as you can get without the truck coming end over end and flipping on you. He comes up over. Whoa, does a handstand. And what great driving skill as Bill Weaver gets it back under control and continues. Similar thing happens on the final jump when he hooks and holds on for the win over Kodiak. Kodiak kind of limps across the car. His truck's still hurt from uh, the damage that it suffered the day before racing Gravedigger. Uh, Mark says the truck's in two-wheel drive and the frame is bent pretty bad. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot to unpack from this race. I, I see that head-on shot of Rambo going over the first set of cars, and I just see basically the opposite of what happened to Carolina Crusher two years prior. A big Chevy truck on two wheels coming at the camera heading toward the wall into that corner. Uh, Carolina Crusher was on the rear wheels, and Rambo's bouncing up on the front wheels in this case. But uh, Weaver kind of gets it, you know, settled back down and and thankfully Kodiak's wounded enough that he doesn't really catch up and uh like you said kind of the same thing happens not as severe on the finish line jump but again another handstand and we see Mark kind of limp across the line you could see how badly the front end of the frame is bent there yeah it's it's bent pretty badly on Kodiak but we got to give a hand out to Bill Weaver Jr. for practicing two wheel skills in 1992 yeah, he was up on the nose for sure, and he got a lot of practice back in the small arenas uh, back then, too, on the Thunder Nationals, because you got to get those trucks stopped before you hit the wall. Very, very true, and that was a case the day before in competition here with uh, Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger, not in this bracket. Equalizer and Master Disaster is your next race that we have up here. Equalizer out to the early lead, but again, dies before the cars and stops master disaster goes on for an easy win uh, i gotta tell you david cook actually drives the truck a lot harder the, today than he did the day before he gets over those cars very well david says they thought they had an electrical problem but it actually ends up being a fuel pump and they'll be back two years prior to this i want to point out it's almost kind of like a karma thing for equalizer because we said two years prior to this bigfoot's having fueling issues and equalizers having the run of the mill on the bracket and now it seems like it's equalizer's turn yeah, you know, they're out there running hard, and 
these issues have plagued Equalizer all weekend. We talked last week how he never really got a full run around the track. He died every time he went out there, and we finally find the issue. It's that fuel pump. So David says they're going to be back, and uh, I think he'd have had an easy first-round win you know, without the issue, but Master Disaster moves on, and Equalizer is going to end up, I think, coming back as a fast loser, even though he doesn't actually finish. That just uh, spells of, of how crazy this weekend is in Louisville. Yeah, lots of parts and lots of breakage just uh, kind of pays to have your stuff ready and ready to go for the next round, even if you had lost in the round before. Uh, Predator and Carolina Crush are up next here, and immediately, Alan Pizzo spins, entering the first turn. Here he goes. Look out, Alan. He spins out on turn number one. Gets it back on track. Goes over the cars, only to fall victim to the slippery track once again. Uh, he actually breaks a steering knuckle on landing, finishing off the cars as well. Tough luck for Predator, who was actually in the finals the night before. Carolina Crusher, easy first round win. Yeah, you know, Allen kind of throws it into that first corner, doesn't even have a chance. Like it just, he catches that curb. And I don't know if that kind of helped bring the truck around or not, but it just snapped on him. And then, as you said, again, coming over that finish line jump, you know, kind of takes it easy, lands off the cars and the rear end uh, lets loose and steering knuckle broke in there for the Predator truck. But what I found interesting, you know, as we go in to see that race, uh, the first shot we get is uh, kind of a real close-up shot on the cockpit of Predator. And you notice the headers are offset on the truck. I'm not sure if that's because it was a left-hand drive truck that they kind of move the headers further forward on the driver's side to not give Allen any problems. But I just thought that was something kind of interesting, worth pointing out, that the headers weren't even side to side. Yeah, that's something I didn't notice. I'll have to go back and look at that. Yeah, I had no idea that the headers were different on that truck. Uh, it's honestly, though, with the breakage that Predator had, we saw that a few times over the years with Pizzo where he would break uh, the rear tire. Always seemed like it was always the right rear that he had that issue with. And I believe it was the same chassis. Yeah, you know, that... The truck just uh, sometimes you get the gremlins and they won't go away. And, you know, speaking of gremlins, boy, the next matchup, Scott Stevens versus King Crunch. And then what Joe Lowe says has the the guy that had the wildest ride of the day in Louisville, uh, John Moore, no problem. And he's the one with all the gremlins. First round highlights continue. Scott Stevens and the King Crunch at his great Texas goes up against the guy who had the wildest ride of the day in Louisville. John Moore, and no problem from Lafayette, Tennessee. Now, did you ever wonder what it would look like to have a monster truck go around a figure eight course with just rear steer? John Moore is going to show us. He takes a tour of the infield, manages to get it back on track, and again, the truck has a mind of its own. John looks at this track from every conceivable angle he looks like a sailor on shore leave but again great driving skill straightens things out over the cars he does manage to finish the track not the prettiest run we've ever seen but you gotta have front steer to negotiate figure eight yeah uh, one point out too john moore actually has his tires mounted backwards like piso the problem is, is he doesn't really ever get to see or test how the truck's going to do. He goes out onto the track. As soon as he gets to the starting line, he throws the steering pump or throws the steering belt off the front of the truck. So he has to basically drive the entire track forklift style by the driving it with the rear steer. Yeah. You know, this is the brand new, no problem. Number three, this is one of the first events they ran with it. Uh, they debuted it up in Columbus uh, a few weeks prior, but uh, man, rough weekend for John Moore, because as we talked about last week, they blew the truck up in the parade lap. For night number one, had to go back, change engines for day number two, and then didn't get the power steering belt tight and uh, kind of slung that off at the starting line. And he he sure gave it a valiant effort trying to get around the track just with rear steering. But with as slick as it is, it just uh, didn't work for him. And as we know from uh, the King Crunch days, interestingly, you know, he's racing against Scott Stevens here. Scott knew you couldn't get around the track with rear steer. He tried that in Houston many years back. Oh, yeah, he tried that in Houston years ago and ended up taking out some uh, starting lights with the rear tire, if I remember right. Truck coming across the finish line. And it's funny, those trucks back in that day were so stiff that on even on three tires, he could drive it out without the rear end dragging the ground. 
Yeah, so, you know, it's it's an awful run for John, but he gets out in front of, you know, semi-hometown fans, kind of. Uh, Louisville's at least, you know, fairly close to Nashville and kind of the area where they're from in Lafayette, Tennessee. So, uh, Joe, he really sells John hard, you know, uh, great driving skill. And, um, you know, getting around the track with the rear steering only, especially a track like that, is no easy, uh, no easy feat. So, um, it's it's good to see John get some TV time, even though he had a lot of trouble this weekend. Shout out, too, by the way, to John and Heidi Moore. I actually got to talk to them a couple weekends ago in Champaign, Illinois. They came out for the Hall Brothers Hometown Show, and I got to sit and talk with them for probably a good 15 minutes. Uh, It was just nice to see John doing better. I know he had been going through some health issues here late recently, so shout out to John and Heidi. Good good to see them. Oh, boy, it's good to hear that if John's doing any better. um, I know he was going through some some, uh, difficulties there, so if, uh, if you say he's doing better, that's definitely great news to hear. Yeah, he was out walking around and enjoying and talking with Mark Hall and uh, Tim Hall and any other driver that would come up and talk to him. Uh, it was just really nice to see, and it was really cool to just hear some of those, kind of like, it was almost like being a fly on the wall and listening to some of those old stories. It was nice. Yeah, that's that's good news for sure. So, you know, we kind of wrap up round one here. We go back to Ken Brew, and Ken looks thoroughly exhausted. He says he has to catch his breath, and, uh, and Joe Lowe has to catch his breath after all that action. So we've gotten through these kind of round one highlights. I really kind of like the rapid fire approach to all these highlights it gives the show a lot of energy even though we don't get to see the full runs but they kind of cut out all the dead stuff and just showed us the action yeah and that's what we need to see that's what they're, that's what people are paying to see is the action so there you go yeah so we we go to commercial here and uh we're going to come back and kind of get ready for uh round number two round two is going to start off here matt with probably one of if not the races as far as two short wheelbase lee sprung trucks that you'll probably ever see probably one of the best races you'll ever see with two trucks that are just so incredibly short rambo and master of disaster like i said i put it here in the notes these two put on a show everywhere they go uh rambo takes the early lead and as joe joe says master disaster needs to turn things on they hit the cars and they kind of go opposite of each other the front wheels on um Rambo are up in the air after the landing and on master side, he's bouncing the rear end. So they're, they're in different, they're almost, they're bouncing the same, but they're in unison of each other. It's just the front and the rear. <laughs> yeah. It's like a synchronized monster truck out of control thing. You know, it's uh, <laughs> Rambo, you know, really has the lead uh, because they hit the cars side by side, but Rambo's already done his outer loop and he's kind of got the lead and it's uh, it's really cool to see how these trucks you know, react opposite each other. Um, Rambo gets kind of lucky this time where he's bouncing the front wheels and he can kind of get it settled down quicker. And David Cook in the Master of Disaster, he's doing what Rambo did in round number one, except he kind of rolls on the brakes a little bit each time. And you can see the truck like slowing down, but riding upward on that that front end a little bit further too. Uh, some of the inexperience showing there for David Cook. had He probably could have brought it down in one bounce if he just stood in the throttle but uh, ended up kind of riding the brakes and trying to settle it down that way, and that pretty much puts him out of the race. We got side by side on the cars, and I thought, boy, this is going to be a close one. I'll just stay in, and I kind of got out of control, and I just couldn't get her under control in time to keep up with them. But uh, it was a good run. I uh, wish I could have got him. Unfortunate for him, but, hey, the crowd got a wild show right there. I want to say, too, incredible shot as they're coming over the cars. There's a head-on shot of these two trucks side-by-side side together in the air. I love it, and I also love how the camera guy actually zooms out to the point where you can see what's happening to both these trucks as they enter the second portion of the track, and you can see one truck nose high, one truck uh, nose down. It's a really good shot. Heads up to the camera crew right there for capturing all of that going into that turn. Oh, great work for sure. You've got uh, multiple different camera angles here where you've got that head-on shot like you talked about. That's how we kind of break into the show. And uh, we've also got a a really cool side shot of the two trucks heading into that first set of cars as well, which is a really good one kind of from the the press box area. And then they kind of zoom in over on Rambo as he goes into the next corner. And, um, you know, this is the first race here of round number two, but we, we didn't get to mention the fact that Barely Tame had a bye run in round number one, and he broke on that bye run, so he doesn't come back. We don't get to see last week's winner at all on this show, which is a real bummer because Doug had been running so great the night before. 
Yeah, shame for Doug Spanier. Well, actually, had almost forgotten about that to the point uh, that we got we get all the way to round two and we completely forgot to talk about how barely tamed the day before his winner is not in the racing bracket. But he's back there with a lot of trucks that aren't in aren't in it as well. Gravedigger, Taurus, just to name a few that are still sitting back there, unfortunately not able to compete. Yeah, so you know, the attrition is certainly settling in here, day two in Louisville. We move on to the next matchup, and knowing what we know from last week, boy, this is, looks like it's going to be a really good one because we've got Carolina Crusher and Gary Porter going against the fast loser, Charlie Pauk, in the next caliber. Yeah, Joe says that Gary is concerned about the track, and Chucky's concerned about Gary, one of the top drivers in the world, and he should be concerned about Gary Porter, Mr. Consistency in Monster Truck Racing. Uh, Chuck actually nails the whole shot here. It starts building a lead over Gary Porter. Uh, Excalibur twists a little bit, but it doesn't really slow him down. Uh, Gary puts on a Gary puts uh, on a comeback here, but he doesn't quite get there. He ends up about three truck lengths behind him. Excalibur just looks like it is completely dialed into this course right now. Chucky's carrying a lot of speed, and we can see here it appears as though Gary Porter is now running the truck in four-wheel drive, where the night before he was running it in two-wheel drive. Uh, he gets a little bit better launch, uh, still doesn't get the whole shot on, on Chucky, but he does get a, a good you know four-wheel spin launch, and boy, Chucky just puts the hammer down the whole way through the track. A leaf spring truck like that, pulling up the inside front tire is always a cool thing to see heading around the figure eight at Louisville, and that bounce off the cars always just stands out to me. The way he lands and then the truck rebounds and like hits full articulation when the left front touches down and the right rear is still coming up off the cars. If you freeze frame it at the right time, you would you would think it was a four link, you know, nitrogen charged shock truck because uh, I can't imagine how they managed to hold the springs together through that March articulation, but it worked great. That's one thing that Excalibur always had on the competition was suspension. They knew how to make leaf sprung trucks work. And this truck, it worked. Excalibur, probably the fastest truck on premises the entire weekend, in my honest opinion. So far in the day, that definitely appears to be true because he uh, he straight up out drives Gary Porter here. Gary has a smooth run. I wouldn't call it a, a ballistic run, but it's a good run. And uh, Chucky ends up taking the win by what? About two truck lengths. Yeah, it was yeah. a classic Gary Porter run. It was very smooth, very consistent, and he didn't push the equipment too hard. In the end, Porter is going to get a win in his own right. He's going to get to load the truck and the trailer in one piece. Well, yeah, he does get the uh, the no damage award for the day, at least so far. And um, Gary, you know, basically just says the other truck was faster than I was today. He uh, he probably could have pushed a little harder, but he was afraid of spinning out on the slick asphalt. And uh, they kind of paint this as a big triumphant upset win, which it really it is. So Gary Porter concerned about the slipperiness of this track. Chuck Falcon throwing caution to the wind in one of the most thrilling upset victories we've seen on the U.S. Hot Rod Association Monster Truck Challenge. We've got Excalibur, who isn't really on TV much, going against one of the top six trucks in the country and uh, taking them out straight up. King Crunch and Equalizer, the next race right here as we come off of that upset win for Excalibur. Second fastest loser, but honestly, as you put in your notes here, probably just really the only truck available to run. However, Equalizer is fixed. They put a new fuel, fuel pump in this truck, and I got to tell you, if anybody's going to rival Excalibur on speed tonight, it's going to be Equalizer on this pass. Off the line, David Morris with a great hole shot. Goes a little wide, but look at this. King Crunch has problems at turn number one. David Morris, his first time over the cars today. What a great job. That fuel pump is working now, baby. Into turn number three. Around turn number four. The big boy is back, trying to redeem himself after problems in round number one. And it's all David Morris, his all equalizer. David Morris looks absolutely dialed. And when he heads over the cars that first time, they kind of bring the audio up on, on the surrounding sound effects. And you can hear David wrap the engine over that set of cars. And that that strong, crisp sound just rings through my ears every time I watch this show. It sounds so good. And David's absolutely moving. Now, we've got a wounded Auto Value King Crunch here. Uh, he's in two-wheel drive. You know, he, he grenaded the front end of the truck last night, uh, and we covered that on last week's show. 
But uh, no match for the equalizer. Certainly, David, uh, excuse me, Scott kind of pulls off early right into the pits. Meanwhile, David's running completely as hard as he can. He kind of hazes the tires into turn number three. And uh, Joe says the big boy is back. Oh, yeah. And he's definitely back as far as I'm concerned. Equalizer looking probably the best it's looked the entire weekend right here. He's never really got to make a complete full pass on the track until right there. And if there's anybody that's going to rival Excalibur's dominance so far in the evening, it's definitely uh, David Morris right here with the equalizer. The truck, like you said, he's pushing it as hard as he can, even though by the uh, exit of the first turn, it's pretty much a buy run for him. Yeah, and this is probably my favorite look for equalizer. He's got the, you know, the slim S10 body, but he's got the KC lights up on the roll bar. Uh, the, they've got the longer, you know, Custer style coilover shocks now instead of the old double stack setup they were running earlier in the season. The truck is to the point where it's kind of going to stay for a while now. They finally hit that sweet spot in the evolution, uh, the pro net in the back instead of the tailgate. The, the truck just looks so racy and so fast. And it is. Yeah, it is. They've got it making it. It looks like a race truck. Yeah, it's it's one of the top race trucks in the country, and you know he's going to move on to the semifinals to face Excalibur. That's going to be a whale of a matchup on paper. As oh, yeah. uh, we head into this, uh, the end of this round already, we're here at the end of round number two, and uh, some good racing for sure. And you know Scott, like you said, just kind of pulled it off early, and he was he knew he was out of it. Yeah, it says he thinks he may have broke a transmission or something like that. Honestly, I think he really only started the race and then just pulled off just to save further equipment. And I uh, just said something for TV, to be perfectly honest here. But I love the next segment that we go into right here. We get Ken with Chucky Palkin and the pit party signing autographs. We go to commercial. We rejoin again at the pit party in a well-done segment. Immediately apparent that this was recorded before the event, but they make it seem like it's right before the semifinals. Yeah, they did a good job here. You know, they don't really give away very easily that this was pre-recorded before the show they if you really look at it with a keen eye you can tell they don't really give any details or anything like that just that basically we're coming back with the semifinals uh, coincidentally chucky happens to be in the semifinals which is good because they're there with him signing the autographs pre-show but um it's really hard to make these kinds of pre-taped segments fit into the broadcast properly. And they did a really good job with it here, I feel. What a great round, too. No wonder they're standing and cheering here in Louisville. Meantime, back in the pits, uh, a chance for some of the drivers to meet the fans. A little autograph party here. Chuck Pawkin of the Excalibur is uh, signing uh, some autographs. How many you signed today, Chuck? Uh, I don't even keep count anymore. Too, uh, too many. I understand what he's talking about. Listen, while he signs and the rest of the trucks get ready for round three, we're going to back away just for a second. More from Louisville here on Monster Truck Challenge is coming up on ESPN. I'll tell you what, I love Louisville. Louisville loves monster truck racing. Why wouldn't they? Look at the action we've had today. Meanwhile, back here in the pits, Fans are getting a feel for what this sport is all about, getting a chance to meet the drivers. The drivers are quickly getting down to the best in Louisville this afternoon. More race side action. Let's go to the track. Here's Joe Lowe. Yeah, they did a great job with it as we go into the semifinal bracket right here. Tropical Thunder and Rambo, your first pair out. Uh, Wayne says they're fortunate enough they haven't broken anything yet. And honestly, I think you're very fortunate. And on this particular weekend, if you haven't broken anything, but honestly, it's one of those weekends where, yes, there's been breakage, but there's also been some insane racing to go along with the breakage. Yeah, and Wayne got that buy run in round number two uh, due to the, the breakage of Barely Tame. So Wayne came back, and uh, he's going to go against Rambo. And we've got two more kind of short wheelbase trucks going up against each other now. we got short wheelbase and very tall trucks as well. Two trucks you wouldn't expect to be race trucks but they brought them out here uh rambo gets the whole shot wayne kind of backpedals a little bit uh rambo gets the lead over the cars with a big bounce again no shock there from the rambo machine gathers it up in time to really open up the lead and win by a pretty wide margin over wayne's mosaic here in the other lane uh wayne says he gets crossed up in some water and when they show the close-up in the replay right here 
off the line. Here's the problem for Tropical Thunder right here. He starts spinning. He goes squirrely this way, that way, and he has to back out of it. has to bring his foot out of it to try to get some control over Tropical Thunder. It's getting really slippery out there. They have to bring a lot of water up from the infield, and I got a little squirreled up, a little crossed up in some water, and it started coming around. I didn't want to spin out, so we just have to come back another day. I really don't see any water on the track. Honestly, I think he hit the rumble strip, and that's really what cost him. Yeah, he's spinning the wheels, and there is some dust there and, and so forth. But um, I think this is going to kind of harken back what we talked about last week, where I think the heavier truck just had the advantage because we're on a slick asphalt track. You can see that Wayne's kind of sliding around, especially coming out of the first turn as well. He's kind of really you know, leaning on the steering and the truck slides out, whereas Rambo just kind of stays planted. And he's able to carry the speed, get over the cars quick, and by half track, the race is pretty much over because Rambo's already got a big lead. Yeah, and it's a little bit shocking that you would see a truck that's pretty much built from like a uh, mid 80s style suspension out there just launching it as hard as it is and winning and going into the finals. The day before, Rambo just seemed like he could not get a handle on the track, but yet he ended up bouncing and rocking and rolling his way into the semifinals because of breakage. Today, he's in the finals because he's winning. He learned how to drive that track the, the next day very well. Bill Weaver on a roll. Yeah, I'm going to take a page out of the Army Armstrong book and say, while Bill Weevil was rocking and rolling, Wayne's Mozanic was slipping and sliding. That's exactly right. As we go into the next race right here, Equalizer and Excalibur, David Morris is, con is concerned that the ramps are a bit steep and short. The on ramps are a little steep and a little short, so if you hit them real hard, you're going to get a lot of air. And honestly, though, I don't, know, I don't know if he needs to be more concerned about that or the fact that the track, like we have said before, is very slick. And both of these trucks seem to be wanting to slide out just a little bit. Uh, trucks are even off the line. Chucky is pushing it hard. The chassis twists the same way off of the first set of cars. We go into the second turn. And honestly, as they go into the second turn, it's anybody's race. This is an incredibly tight race between two drivers that are really pushing the limits of their trucks. One's going to the finals, one's going on the trailer. Equalizer and the new kid on the block. Chuck Pawkins and Excalibur, and look at him drive. He doesn't let anything deter him. Chuck Pawkins, this guy is turning on the Excalibur. This is his day. David Morris and the Equalizer hot on his trail. He can win this one. He's on the inside track. This is the race of the day so far for sure. We've got Chucky just pouring smoke out of the back of Excalibur as we head through the first turn. And you can start to hear the excitement and the volume level of Joe Lowe start to increase throughout this race. And he does an absolute masterful job of calling the play-by-play -play on this race. Uh, you know, kind of the underdog story with, with Chucky running through the bracket, going against the hot truck equalizer. And... Um, he says, you know, Ch Chucky is, is on it. He says, this is his day. David Morris is hot on his tail. And then, oh, no. Oh, no. He blows it. David Morris cuts it short. Cannot stay on the track. And it's a double upset for Excalibur. First, the Carolina Crusher. And now David Morris and the Equalizer. Yeah. Yep, they go into that second turn. Uh, Equalizer has the inside line, clips the rumble strip just a little bit, and I think that's what costs him here is he loses the rear of the truck. It spins out just enough so Excalibur can just keep on trucking. And I tell you, Chucky doesn't back down. He keeps going, and he goes across the finish line and wins here, but it's an unfortunate that what happens to David Morris, there is no telling how close this race would have been had Equalizer's grip remained the same. Man, I, I think it all comes down to on the entrance of that second turn, David cuts it just tight enough where he clips that inside kind of rumble strip curb area, and that gets the rear end upset, and the, and the truck starts kind of bouncing on the rear end, and that's where the traction goes away. If he'd have made that stick, boy, I think we're going to have a, an absolute moonshot from both trucks over those cars. Yeah, and we were going to see a similar finish as to what we saw with Digger and Kodiak the day before. Yeah, and, and David doesn't get out of it. He keeps his foot in it and, you know, makes up just a hair of time on that inside then. 
uh, coming back, but it's just it's nowhere near enough. Um, he's still a good, you know, three, four truck lengths back at the finish line as he kind of goes through some of the mud there at the very edge of the track. And uh, boy, Chucky, he's he's jacked up on the chip to 100 percent. He's given the, the big fist pump out the window. He's going to the finals. And he's going to the finals, and honestly, he's probably the favorite to win in the finals going in there with as fast of a run that he just put down. Probably the fastest pass of the entire weekend. I think what really hurts David Morris right here is Chucky has had three, maybe four passes out here on this track where he has been able to just flat go. Morris has had one pass under his belt. Even though he's a world champion, he's only got one pass under his belt right here. I don't know that he knows what he can put into the track, whereas Chucky knows exactly what he can put into the track. Chucky is running on that edge for sure. And like you said, David only has one full run in on the entire weekend, let alone just today. So I was trying hard down there to get ahead. And when I went into the turn, I spun the truck out. And then I just never could get enough control back to it to get straightened up to where I could get some more speed going to get back in front of Excalibur. So he took the win. Ken says this is some of the best racing we've, we've had in a long time as we head into commercial. Uh, we rejoin the pit party again as he pitches it over to Joe Lowe for the final. Well, I, I changed my air pressure and my tires, and I just tried to, to run a smooth run, a smooth course, just try and collect myself. Chuck Bucket, he's had a win today over Carolina Crusher and Equalizer, but that doesn't impress Bill Weaver. He's run against him before. Uh, Chucky, uh, we run with Chucky all year long, and uh, he's real good on the line. So if I'm, if I gotta, if I want to get catch an edge on him, I gotta really get cut a good light. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, Chucky says they've changed some things. And I think that might be a detriment to him. He knows how that truck's reacting right now with what they have. I don't know if I'd want to even mess with – I wouldn't even want to take a tre- – like go out there and shave a little bit of the tires at all. I wouldn't want to mess with that truck as good as it's running. Chucky's got the hot hand today, and I can't imagine why you'd want to change anything. But, you know, maybe they found something a little bit wrong or something that needed adjusted back square. You know, who knows what the change was that they actually made. But, you know, we get both drivers here on the interview kind of setting up the final and uh two trucks again that we probably wouldn't have expected at the beginning of the show here in the final for the second day in a row i don't know i would have expected excalibur after performance that i saw from it in day one rambo would not have expected it to make it out of round one after the performance you saw the day before with the truck bouncing so much uh as we get the call here from ken brew the cream de la cream has risen to the top here uh looking at the final you've got pawkin who has been very smooth and you've got Rambo, who has been smooth up until landing. Yeah, you know, it's all going to come down to whoever makes the mistake here in this finals. And it's uh, it's definitely going to be a good race to leaf sprung trucks. So we've got, you know, trucks that have generally been fairly stable, but they kind of leave uh, the line here. They lo- they leave, you know, pretty even. I'm going to give just a hair edge to Excalibur. And then about midway through that first corner, things start going wrong for Chucky. Rambo, Excalibur, and Excalibur does in fact get a hole shot. Rambo trying to keep up with him, and look, oh no, look out for Chuck Bucket. He cuts that turn too tight and spins around. Rambo gets a big lead. It's almost like he's had this race handed to him. Yeah, it seems like this is Chucky's night. If you just you go back and you look all the way through this bracket, it seems like this is going to be one of those nights where it's just nobody's going to be able to touch this truck. It seems like it's doing perfect. And then... He fishtails into the grass in the final round against Rambo. He gets it straightened out, and he starts chasing down Bill Weaver. Uh, We see Excalibur pop back into frame, honestly, a lot closer than you probably would have thought he would have been after doing a complete donut down there in the middle of turn number number one. But uh, that's not quite enough to come back on him. He's not going to have that magical Bigfoot 4 comeback here in Louisville. Chucky backs out of it after the exit of the final turn, kind of knows that he's lost this race. And Bill Weaver... It's a huge surprise upset win here out of this field of trucks. You would not have expected Rambo to be the one to go on and take the win. But, hey, huge shout-out to Bill Weaver for just staying consistent and keeping the truck together. But Excalibur is back on the track, making a valiant effort to catch him. Rambo going wide. Excalibur tries to pick up some more time. Can he do it? Excalibur trying to catch Rambo, but he doesn't have enough time, and Rambo gets the win in Louisville. Wild Bill wins a wild race in Louisville, Kentucky.
Kentuckian and Excalibur's dreams of a championship. Big win on TV for Bill for sure. And, you know, let's back up to that first corner again with Chucky. The rear end kind of comes around a little bit slower. And you can actually see Chucky goes into full wheel lock the other direction. Front and rear steer trying to save that truck. And he does, but he overcorrects. As he gets into the grass, the truck then, you know, tail fishes around the other way. And by the time he's even back, perpendicular with the track he's got the front and rear wheels cranked back to the right again he was fighting that truck all the way through the corner and i don't know how he got it turned around so quick to keep moving but when you see that end zone shot from the crush cars of rambo heading over the cars and excalibur charging into the frame that gave me shades of bigfoot four two years prior myself that's yeah that's it did how for I me as well it. it did for me as well because you would just not have expected that truck to be that close after basically doing a complete donut in the middle of the turn, the opposite direction. Yeah, and another thing to point out here is Rambo did not get off the cars very well, and he completely goes into Excalibur's lane. Had these two lanes been reversed and Excalibur had the inside track on the finish approach, this race would have been close enough to to probably you know be a photo finish and, and certainly closer than it was because Chucky is making up time on Rambo, even on the outside lane, you know, pretty much until they get back to the straight section. So Chucky only ends up losing by what a second and a half. Yeah. Maybe that. I mean, and honestly, I think he would have been a lot closer had he stayed on it to try and catch Weaver over the front, the finish of the cars. But when he saw Bill hitting the jump and he was exiting the corner, I think he was just like, all right, this is enough. I'm going to save the equipment at this point. And what a disappointment for Chuck Hawkins. Uh, it's, the rear end just started coming around. It broke free. It started coming around on me, so I backed off it, tried to straighten back out. Got back into it for what I could to try and play catch up, and I couldn't quite pull it off. Well, save his equipment and save his back, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's impressive to see, you know, Bill, he's bouncing across the finish line, and Bill's about out of the truck by the time the truck actually comes to a stop. I don't know how he got out of the belt so quick. Well, he's probably used to that truck bouncing so much that he knows exactly when to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. get out of the seatbelt. He uh, stands that's, like, that's probably the biggest win of Bill Weaver's career right there. Well, on TV for sure. You know, he takes the big TV win, and he's excited, pumping his fist to the crowd, and it's uh, it's definitely a huge, huge win against some really good trucks on the TV show. I seen Excalibur there. He got a little squirrely in the corner, so I just tried to keep my truck in a straight line and get far enough ahead of him to where he couldn't catch up with me again. When you're that far ahead, do you tend to back off or want to keep going? Oh, uh, I kind of backed off a little bit coming into the second corner, but then I see him coming on strong, so I started getting back on it harder. Extremely stiff competition right here. Bill Weaver, a truck you would not have expected. Rambo going on to take the win here in Louisville. Uh, we're down to the last part of the show here now, Matt, the rating of the show. And honestly, I got to tell you, uh, Ken sends us to a final commercial break. We come back with a little bit of a a somber note that it's time for the show to close. And that's really it here as far as Louisville 92. Um, as far yeah, well, as ratings we get, go. Well, we what? get another little segment here uh, as as Joe kind of wraps up the, the event, showing, again, all these highlight clips of the slick track, the slippery conditions, trucks spinning out. You know, Ken, Gary Porter told us early on he was concerned about this slippery track, and truck after truck after truck proved him to be right. In addition to that, this figure eight course, a very long course, and a lot of driving skill required. The United States Hot Rod Association Monster Truck Challenge in Louisville has been one of the most exciting shows we've seen, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you, Joseph, and thank you for watching. For Joe Lowe and Jim Clark and everybody here in Louisville, I'm Ken Brew. Please drive safely. We'll see you next time right here on the fastest 30 minutes in motorsports monster truck challenge i i think it's a cool kind of recap um to show how much action there was on the flat parts of the track not even over the jumps um you know throughout this show i i think it was a dynamite event start to finish even though you don't have the the absolute a plus marquee names your bigfoot your grave digger your taurus your barefoot um it's these guys put on a tremendous show and and it was action start to finish yeah i agree this is uh, some shows where 
yes, you don't have those marquee names, but other names come to your come into your mind, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. That's kind of where uh, Excalibur shines. That's where Carolina Crusher shines. That's where Equalizer shines out there uh, as far as trucks that people will tend to start remembering as time goes forward uh, in this sport. And I got to tell you, I, I love the fact of the way they close the show with all of these. And you, I'm glad you reminded me of it. I was about ready to just launch into the whole review portion of the show. But the, that whole ending segment where you see not just the jumps and what's, ca- what's causing jumps to have issues, but the actual the spinning on the track, how slick the track is, it's something that you don't really ever see again in the sport of monster truck racing until you get to uh, maybe uh, Rocky Mountain Raceway when they start doing that uh, unique figure eight that they had out there. Yeah, the the asphalt and concrete racing is definitely something different. It's it, we don't get to see it that much anymore, and and definitely not on TV. But boy. A great show. Joe Load doing an amazing job on commentary. Ken Brew doing an amazing job as the host. We kind of finish out with the still shots as we normally do on Monster Truck Challenge. Rambo bouncing nose up across the finish line. I think that's a great shot. Um, and and kind of says, you know, to the viewers, you know, we'll see you next time. He says, you know, thanks to Joe Lowe and Jim Clark, and, and we end the show. But it's uh, – we have no typos this week on the on the computer brackets, which is a good news, and uh, just action start to finish. I, Josh, I got to give this one a nine out of ten. Now, I got to stick with eight out of ten on this one for me. I think it's just as good as the show that we saw before. Uh, I just I can't get over some of the actual like the round one highlights are nice, but I, I'm one of those guys I always want to see the full race. That's just always how it's been for me. Uh, I know you like that rapid fire format, but me, I've I've always been the fan. I want to see the entire thing. Yeah, you know, to see the whole race would have been nice. Um, we do have a pretty big lineup here with a te- with the half hour format, so I'm I guess I'm kind of giving them a little bit of a pass there. And they use that time that was kind of dead air on the races to kind of build the the story a little bit more and get some more driver interviews than we had the first night, which I kind of appreciate hearing the driver feedback. Um, so that's, that's probably why I give this an, a higher rating than last week. I kind of leapfrog you on the score. I think you got two eights on the weekend and I got a seven and a nine. So we got the Russian judge over there, Matt Stoltz, and I got the American judge holding up the right score. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I hope you all enjoyed Louisville 92. It's one of those races that kind of flies under the radar a little bit. It seems like it's always shown just for one highlight, and that's Dennis Anderson's gravedigger flying through the air uh, and ends up unfortunately hurting Dennis. It's a bad highlight to show, but at the same time, what a show does it come from as far as the weekend goes. And we'll see you guys again very soon on these long tracks across America. Monster Wars coming soon. Don't give it away.